friends and welcome to the gentleman's journey this is my journey and i'm sharing it with you if you're into guy stuff and boots consider subscribing for more stuff like that hey in this video we're going to be covering the irish setter two harbor steel toe slip on work boot i've owned this for five years so it's not an unboxing it's a straight up review so let's get into it. Now, I didn't have to buy these boots. The company I was working for actually told me, head over to Red Wing, here's a voucher, and get yourself a set of boots. So I grabbed a different pair first. They were a lace-up. I can't even remember what they were, but they were killing my feet. So I grabbed these guys. I worked in the oil field for a bit with these, and then ever since, I've been running a cleanup and hauling business. So I'm excited to share my experiences, the pros and cons. Uh, but before we do that, let's head over to the website and see what these things are made of. Over here on the Irish Setter website, of course, this is brought to you by Red Wing. Uh, we're at the two harbors. Then we scroll down a bit, and uh, this is the safety toe, the 83906. So we'll check that out. We're just gonna cover some of the specs, but I always like to bring you guys here just to get it straight from the camel's mouth. Uh, and some of the things that I like about this is the safety toe, of course. The leather type was uh, geared towards being waterproof. I'll talk a little bit about how they were cared for over the years. So the cement to welt construction. And so this isn't a Goodyear uh, 360 degree or even a Blake stitch. So that's where I'm going to lose a bunch of you guys and that's quite all right. I mean, this channel is a journey and I've learned a lot. So when I bought these boots, I didn't even know what that was. It just seemed typical to me. And so it's glued straight to the bottom, has no stitching, makes it nearly impossible to resole. And that's been one of my biggest complaints with the boot. Uh, the footbed is removable polyurethane. Again, I've always felt it's pretty comfortable. Uh, shank non-metallic, so it's probably some kind of fiberglass or plastic shank down the middle that gives it pretty nice support. Uh, and then a Vibram or Vibram outsole, which has held up really good. And that's again one of the strengths. And if I didn't lose you yet, it's made in Vietnam. And so these are not like some of the Red Wings that are probably made in America. And that's where I lose a lot of guys and that's perfectly fine. But that's kind of just a rundown real quickly of the build of these boots. And that way you have a little frame of reference if you're not even sure what they're about or what kind of boot it is. It's a bit hard not to give away all my thoughts about these as we're going through the details about the boots, but I just want to make sure we all have a frame of reference of what these guys are made of. So starting out the steel toe, just like any steel toe, man, this thing saved me several times. I do a cleanup and hauling business now and I like to carry scrap metal and big old two by sixes. And when you drop one of those on your feet and have these on, whoo, it just makes your day. But you know, the outsole, this is the Vibram or Vibram as they say, and I feel like it's still holding up today. Five years later and a bunch of miles on these things, I don't have any big complaints other than the way it's attached to the boot, which we'll get into later. Uh, so the outsole has been performing really well. And then the midsole, again, working in the oil field, I was standing on some concrete floors all day long and then doing some of the work I do now. I feel like I've never had any foot fatigue, it just felt really nice. I actually got a size 12 in these guys, and so contrary to my Red Wing Roughnecks, uh, where I sized half a size down, I feel like these 12s fit me really good. And again, I've had no fatigue. Onto the leather, that's a place of maybe contention as far as how I can review this, because I've actually changed the care process, and Red Wing's been responsible for part of it. I'm not sure if you're aware, but if you take Red Wing boots in any shop across America, as far as I know, they'll clean them and condition them for free. It's just something, it's a great brand and that's been something that's really attracted a lot of guys in the work field to go to Red Wing. And so the first couple years I would just take them in and they would lather them up and they would look like they'd be dripping wet when I would get them back. And I didn't even really ask what they were putting on there. As far as I understand, it's the mink oil. And so the mink oil is gonna protect it. It's gonna darken it quite a bit, but it's gonna help with water resistant and all that stuff. So they've held up pretty good in water, other than the splitting that we'll get into a little bit in the con section. But as far as the mink oil goes, wherever it creases or bends, it's actually starting to disintegrate and even small chunks are coming off. And so as far as the leather, 
I wouldn't say I'd be giving it an A+, plus, but I can't say that it's completely the leather's fault, maybe part of the care process. Again, this is the gentleman's journey. I'm learning and taking you guys with me, so this isn't something I've had and cared for the same way across the whole process. Uh, but again, overall, I'm pretty happy with how the leather's held up. It's just, if you're, look, if you're into some kind of patina or something like that, these boots don't have anything near any kind of heritage line from Red Wing. They're just dark, ugly work boots, and I've been happy because that's what I bought them for. That's what we need them for. So overall, you know, that's a pretty good covering of the good, the good, bad, and the ugly. So the bad and the ugly is basically how they've been constructed. And so they don't have a Goodyear welt. They don't have a Blake stitch. They're just glued together. And so essentially this Vibram outsole is just glued to the boot. And as long as that glue lasts, it's a great boot. But when it starts deteriorating, then there you go. And so something I've had to do, and you could see it still on the boot, is I've had to put some shoe goo on it over the years. And that's something that makes me not give this boot a high rating because it just seemed like I had to do it too soon. And so you'll see, basically I've had to take off the whole front, shove some goo in there, and then I clamped it back together for the night. And to its credit, shoe goo, you know, it's holding up. So I'll put a link to that shoe goo in the description if you got a set of boots that are falling apart I bet you too can get another year or so out of them just with that junk so it's worth trying if you got a set that you really love uh, I'm not gonna get too deep into these apparently you can get that kind of sole professionally glued back on friends I'm just gonna let these wear out and when they're done I'll be done with them uh, and then the other thing is the stitching came out and so uh, down the side Again, that's something where I could probably take it to a cobbler, have them check it out, have them stitch it up. Uh, but you can't get to those stitching with the inner lining. And so I, I don't even want to deal with that. Again, when they go out, they go out. And so again, there's the outsole, how it's attached to the boot. I wasn't happy with, I wasn't thrilled with, but we've made do thanks to the shoe goo. And then the stitching, I'm not going to do anything with that. But friends, uh, they've held up pretty well. Now, my care process after I stopped taking it to Red Wing uh, is I got this old junk in some kind of box of, I don't know where I even got it. It's the snow seal. And so not necessarily a, a strategy behind that. I would just see when they got really thirsty and I would slather it on. And I think that's pretty much how we all do it, right guys? You just kind of have an eye for your boots and you see it and when it's time, it's time. Uh, and I've done that and it really helps with the weather and these have kind of became work boots slash snow boots. Uh, I could probably use something with a little more insulation so be looking out for a better winter boot video in the future but that's what I've done with this snow seal. And then something uh, after I got this kit in a mail from a new friend was this all natural leather conditioner by Red Wing and it does have some mink oil in there and this stuff offers some good water protection. And so I've been using this quite a bit as well. Uh, I'm probably just going to use off the rest of this snow seal on these boots. Uh, but for these work boots that I'm just going to wear till they rot, you know, it works for me. So the summary of these boots, there's a lot of good things about them. Uh, they're pretty reasonable. I'll drop a link in the description to them. So they're, they're affordable. But the leathers lasted, whatever we say about the care process, the leathers still holding up today. The outsole has been awesome. The midsole has been really good. A steel toe is a steel toe, but that saved me a couple times. They're a good boot. Now, I think there's some better options out there that you can get into for some work boots that maybe have that Goodyear uh, welt that you can get resold and you can keep going on that same pair of boots for a while. Uh, something that might be worthwhile if you get a tear like I got something that you want to repair but friends I don't know I mean I I give it like a B rating I don't know what that means to you but uh, take it or leave it I think they're a good set of boots but I certainly think you can do better if you ha if given the choice and you have a couple hundred extra bucks to spend beyond these then maybe reach for that and you can see them last maybe eight ten years I think these guys at five years I didn't keep wearing them every day daily, uh, but I still wear the heck out of them. I think they're a fair boot. I honestly do. I think they're a good boot. So friends, that's what we do over here at The Gentleman's Journey. 
that's my story with these boots. I'd love to hear if you have the same set. How did they last for you guys? How did you condition them? And uh, if not, just let me know what boot you're rocking today. So friends, I hope you're enjoying this channel. Uh, make sure and subscribe if you haven't, and we'll catch you in the next video.